Hey there, welcome back. Now let us work on our next test case, which is login and logout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it as login logout test case. And yeah, we are going to import this API test case. Now inside that I'm going to create a method called test underscore login as well as test underscore logout. But before login, we need some user, we need a user to actually log in. So for that, we need to first create a user since this user is not going to be valid for this particular class. This class has nothing to do with this class. So the first thing we are going to do is we need to create a user and then log in and log out test. Now, whenever we have some cases like we need to set up something, we need to add some data, create a fake user or create some other class. Maybe in reviews, we are going to do that. In our movie list, we are going to do that. So the basic setup that we need to do initially to test something, we are going to do inside our setup class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this setup class. And inside this, we are going to create our user or whatever we want. So we can directly use a variable called user and we are going to store our user here. So I'm going to utilize my user model and then I'm going to create a class for it. So this is our user model. By default, we have this with Django. And then I'm going to create a user. And here I can directly pass my username as well as password. So I'm going to call username as uh, example. And then I'm going to take a password as new password 123. This looks fine. Now this is our setup class. That is initially this class will be run before our test underscore login as well as test underscore logout. Now we have created a user. We can try to test our login functionality over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new test and I'm going to call it as test underscore login. Now we already have this user. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass some data to test out my login. Uh, that is going to be my username. My username will be example. And then I'm going to pass a password. And this is going to be my password. So this is the data that we are passing and we need to send a post request to our link, which is login. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable name as response. I'm going to store the response actually, and I'm going to send a request to my client. This is going to be a post request. And again, I'm going to utilize this reverse and send a request on a login link. So here I need to use login and then I need to pass this data. This looks fine. And once we get a response, we need to match if we are going to get a 200 OK or not. So we are going to compare this response code with 200 OK. Yeah, this looks fine. Let me run my test again. So we ran two tests and there is some error. We got 400. So there is some problem. Line number 34, if I get here, that means we got some issue. We got a response as 400. So if you remember 400 is issue, 400 is something related to our problem. If you need more information, get onto a status code, scroll down a bit and 400 is bad request. And the reason is the password that we are passing is new password. Whereas the correct password is new password at the rate one, two, three. So we need to pass the correct password, save this one, get back to my terminal. And if I run this one again, here you can see we got two successful tests and everything is okay. So that's how we are going to work. We first did the all the initial setup that we require. In this case, we had no user. So first we created a user and then we ran the test. Now let me also test about the logout. So I'm going to use the test logout. So this is going to be a bit complicated because to log out, we need to send token. If you remember in your postman, 
we cannot directly log out. We need to pass token with our header. Otherwise, we cannot log out. We cannot send a request for review or response or anything else. For our movies, we need to carry the token. And for that, we need to first access the token. We already have this user. We have created this user and we are going to work with this only. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the token. So all I have to do is store this inside my token and I'm going to utilize token dot objects dot get method. And I need to get token for my username. Okay, this will be user name. Yeah. I need to get for this specific user, which is my example. And once I get this token, I need to pass this to get the credentials. So if you remember, if you jump onto your testing part and if you just jump onto this API client, jump onto this authentication and whenever we try to authenticate, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the token or all the information that we have regarding login or logout. First, we need to get that. Then we need to pass this information to our credentials. So here we need to pass something similar, which is our token key. So let me jump here, get back. And all I need to do is I need to call self dot client credentials. And here I need to pass my token. This looks fine. So now we are logged in. Once we are logged in, all we have to do is send a request to our logout link and then check what type of status code we get. So let me save this response inside my response. And all I need to do is send a request and we don't need to send any data since we are logged in using this credential. We don't need to send any data and here we need to send a request to our logout link. Once that is done, all I have to do is match my status code. So I'm going to utilize this assert equals to match the status code, which 200. Okay. This looks fine to me. Let me jump back here. Test this again. Okay, we got an error. This is regarding our token. Yeah, so we need to use self.token. This is the token. So it is going to be self.token and then dot key. Jump back here, run this one. This looks fine. We got okay. Now here, this response is matching actually the view that we have added. So we have view and here we have added a status code as 200 okay. And here it is 201. That means this is working fine. If you want, you can match other response code as well according to your requirement. That's done. So I hope you got the basic idea how we are going to do. If we need to do some initial setup to test our function, we need to do that inside our setup. And remember this U is capital. And then we can do that. When we are sending a post request, maybe we need to send some data. We can create this data, send this separately to our client with our post request and then match with assert equals. Now the other important thing is if we require to carry a token for certain requests like uh, maybe a get request, post request, put request, we need to follow this method. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch the token for my user. Once I'm able to get this token, I'm going to store here. And then I'm going to log in. I'm going to use client.credentials, pass my HTTP authorization request along with my token key. Once that is done, that means I'm carrying my token for all the requests. Then all I have to do is send a request to my logout link and then match the response. That's it. I hope you got the idea. Now in the next lecture, let us carry on with our other test cases, which is going to be inside our watchlist underscore app and these are going to be pretty long because we have multiple views. For now, I recommend you to practice this and then I also check the status code on Postman so you can match them. Also try to break something. So if I do something wrong, I'm going to match them. So maybe by any chance here, if I'm passing something else, if my status code is something else, or if the name is something else, I'm going to get an error. So this is pretty important. By chance, if I change this from post to get, I'm going to get an error. So maybe by mistake, I did this. 
So if I run a test case here, you can see I got some error which is 405 and it's not matching with 201. So if you jump here, go to your status code, 405 is related to method not allowed. So this is pretty important to keep a track of everything. That's all for this lecture. Uh, let me run this one again. Yeah, everything is working fine. That's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, let us continue our journey with testing. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one.